Good morning guys and welcome to Digging the Coast. I've got a new sign. Three, six, five. Did that work? Somebody told me to do this. Three, six, five. It works sort of. I'll have to get used to that one though, I think. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> So today we're at Mablethorpe. I just love the na the word Mablethorpe. What a lovely word. What a lovely name for a place. Um, what time is it? It's about half past eight, I think. There's already a metal detectorist or two here. I've seen dotted around. They've already done this area I'm in at the moment. But, fingers crossed, it's a sunny start. It's meant to get cloudy and pretty rainy later on. So let's get cracking because today is not going to be like yesterday. It's very small and it's out, and it's not a good signal neither. In fact, I'll tell you what it is, because my pinpointer isn't picking it up, it's a piece of foil. I can't even find it, but I, what I'm noticing with this pinpointer by, uh, which one's this? This is the Detechnics one. What I've noticed about this pinpointer is it doesn't always pick up foil, which I'm not complaining about. Possibly the strangest sandcastle building toy I've ever seen in my life. A walrus with a woolly hat. Why? And why is it on this part of the beach? Anyway, it's too dry, it won't work. Or will it? Will it work? Will it work? Let's have a go. Not really. Not really. It just looks like a sand dump. Oh, right, we've found a coin. All right, it's only two pence. It's only two pence, but it's a coin. Is it the only one? Or is it a spill? Not bothered. I'm happy. I'm happy I've found two pence. That's a good start. That's a good sign of things to come. Money. So the first thing I've noticed about Mablethorpe, and it is a, a seaside resort, but well, it's got no like front on it really. There's just a few little shops on the front. All the activities behind on the streets. Um, normally, the front would be heaving with amusements and, well, oh, there is a few. There's a house of terror over there. And the other thing I've noticed is the beach is filthy. Pick up your rubbish, people. Um, now I know it was a busy day yesterday, but it's still no excuse, is it? For a beach to be full of rubbish. I suppose, yeah, it was much busier yesterday than the land they will have anticipated. I'm sure they'll clean it up at some point, because it's quite a nice beach. Certainly this end, it's pure beautiful sand. And then it looks as if it gets a bit shingly. I've got a good feeling about this one as well. I think this might be a one or two pence piece by the sound. Oh, it's foil. See what I mean? The pinpointer isn't picking up foil. It'll pick up any other metal, just not foil, which, as I say, is not a bad thing at all. Now, you might remember the other day, I said, uh, does anybody know about stones, geology, and all that lot? Because I was finding little green bits of stone. Now, we've got a zone, um, resident geologist now. His name is Sam. He comes from Wales. And it's his job. What does he say about himself? He's a fine specialist to the St. Barb's Museum, the Tewkesbury Museum and the Market Lavington Museum. And he's doing his masters in university on geology. The guy knows what he's talking about. Now the green stones, it turns out they were just mud stones. And a mud stone, I know this, they're millions of years old, but they've just turned green because they've had a lot, no oxygen. Lack of oxygen turns them green, you see. Yeah, I knew that. Anyway, He's very kindly, and I hope you're going to do this all the way through the trip, Sam. This is brilliant. He's told me about all the places I'm going in the next week um, and told me what the geology is like in each place, what to look out for. So today we're in Mablethorpe, and this is what Sam says, resident Sam. Boring. Okay, so it's boring here. He says, chalk is a little bit interesting, but deeply buried under the tidal deposits. Okay. He says, you know, if you get shingly bits, Look for white stones and the sea urchins. 
but very deep probably. You'll get some very old ancient sea urchins. I have found some little white pieces of chalk. There is a little bit of a shingly line here on the where the tide comes up to. I haven't, I haven't gone down there yet. But there's, there's nothing in these, Sam. There's nothing in these. There's, there's no sea urchins in them. But yeah, very interesting. Thank you very much. It's nice to know we've got an expert on board. Now what I'm looking for is if there's anybody out there who's an expert on knowing exactly where all the treasure is, please get in touch and tell me and I'll, I'll dig it up. It's out. Whatever it is, it's in my hand. Oh, 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 oh. Well, it's nothing. It's nothing. I thought it was a little uh, sea creature, you know, them like little snails, but it's not. And obviously it wouldn't be made of metal, would it? Um, I don't know what that is. I think it's just a stud off some jeans or something goes there. It's in my hand, it's in my hand. It's a, it's a coin, it's a coin, it's a coin. Two coins, two coins in one morning. I'm on a roll, I'm on a roll, honestly. That's three pence, my parking were only five pounds. We're nearly there, we're nearly there. One pence piece. Magic. Now, I don't know how to read the tides and things. Um, you know, you get people who come on the beach every day and they know exactly what they're doing. I haven't got a clue when it comes to beach detecting. I'm sure I'll be an expert by the time I finish. Um, but what I'm doing at the moment, there's a band here of shingle and it's basically like the water's edge. It's got quite a few water's edges. Got a few up here. This one here and then it drops right down. Then you've got this bit in the middle and then it's dry again on the other side. It depends, I don't know. If you want historic things, I'm presuming you'd have to go out there. If you want modern coins and jewelry and things, I'm guessing up here somewhere. Um, as I say, someone was metal detecting here and it left just as I came on the beach. It's probably cleared the place out. And people will have been here last night because the tide went out last night as well. Um, but there'll, there'll still be things here. As I say, I found three pence. If anyone wants to give me any tips on where I should be detecting, I, I'm, up, I'm all ears. You know, all you beach specialists. I don't know which part I should be doing. I'm using the dais again today. I do like the Fors Relic, but it's very heavy. It, you know, it makes your arm ache after a while. And this is my eighth day on the trot and I'm getting achy arms now. So I've gone back to this, which is fantastic in the dry sand. It's not coping as soon as I get anywhere near the wet stuff because I don't know what settings it's on. I don't even know if it's in beach mode or it's still in fast mode. I don't know. But it's, you know, it's picking things up on the beach, so on the, on the dry, so I'm happy with it at the moment. So I'm just doing along this shingle a bit and it's absolutely full of shells. Look at them all, they're all over the place. It's literally just a pile of shells. Um, I used to love shells as a kid. I was one of them who would go to the shop and buy a big pack of shells every time I went to the seaside. I just loved them. I love the beach though, I love everything about the beach. It's just so relaxing, you know? But ask me in about 360 days whether I still like the beach. Might be a completely different answer. I've just found a diamond. Can you see it in the middle there? Beautiful. Diamond on a bow. I knew it was just picking up a very, very faint noise was the machine. So it's an iron back. Very nice, how beautiful. I noticed that there's a lot of seagulls hanging around the water's edge here. And I've noticed there's somebody up there, you can't see them on this lens, but there's somebody up there with a bucket. And they're going around collecting seagull poops. Look, poops all over the place, what seagulls have left. It's absolutely full of them. Now, there's someone up there who's got a hobbit of collecting seagull poops. What's going on? What are you doing, you weirdo? Get a proper hobby like metal detecting. Well, the seagull poop collector gets weirder and weirder by the second. I don't know what he's using to pick it up. But he's making big holes, look. Look at that weird thing coming out there. But I don't know what he's doing. Why is, it, why is he doing that? Why don't he just go like that? So much easier. So which expert is going to tell me what these are? 
it's some kind of seaweed I'm pretty sure absolutely disgusting it feels like it's alive Ugh, I don't like it it's like big worms and they're dotted all over the the beach different sizes I wondered if anyone could tell me exactly what they are I think it is a seaweed but that's all I know about it okay the tides come in there's still a bit of beach here but I've, I've done all this and so has the other metal detectorist Tides come in, we've just had a bit of rain, and it is cold. It's really cold. I've had to go back to the car, get my shirt and, uh, and hat on. Um, let's take a little walk through. Let's take a little walk through Mablethorpe. Let me show you what, what's what. I've found the table over there on my own, and there's a little old lady trying to steal it off me. And there's a guy singing. And he's singing one of my favourite songs. I learned this at school. Okay, so I finally managed to order my food. Yeah, people are trying to steal my table. There's trouble filming over there. I've left my phone on the table. They're trying to steal it. Uh, the waitress is very apologetic. This guy brought you up. It's very good. You know, I'm sat right next to him and I'm going to have fish and chips and listen to some good music. So just leave me alone for five minutes, yeah. Probably ten minutes, probably half an hour. In the course throughout the land, when the mighty race is over and the curtain around him falls, you can hurry up. X Factor 2017, there's your winner. So here we go, I've been wanting fish and chips for, God, well over a week. Finally got them. So we're in Mablethorpe, and a lot of people keep saying, how can I help out? I've no money. I've no money to donate. I can appreciate that. There's two ways you can help out. You can share the video, you can like, comment, and all that. There's another way. Just go in your local shop and ask them for some money, yeah? You Right, let's try one. I'm not trying cost cutter because they don't own it. Yeah, they just work there and they don't get paid much anyway. Chalk rack. I don't even know. Homer No, too posh, too. I don't even know what this one is. There's no sign on here. Couch monkey. DVDs, games, CDs, etc. Let's try in here. This is all you have to do. Watch. I know it's quite embarrassing doing it, but hey, you never know, do you, until you ask. Hang on, let me turn you around. Hello. Oh, yeah. Um. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm all right. I'm doing like a charity thing all around Britain, yeah? All right, yeah. And basically, I've come in just on the off chance you're going to give me some money. Some money for charity. It's for charity, it's for rays of sunshine, for children, for terminally ill children, seriously ill children, just to give them one last wish before they die. I know you don't know me, but I was hoping, you know, you'd, you'd dig deep into your heart there and just do your little thing for charity, yeah? Of course, mate, no problem at all. Okay, thank you very much. This is how you do it. I there can't believe he only took that much out. There were more in that. Thank you very much. You're very much. welcome, mate. £20. And what's your name? My name's Dave. Dave. And what's this shop called, Dave? This is Couch Monkey, a DVD and game shop. Couch Monkey DVD and, and game shop. See you, Dave. 20 quid. 20 quid. Just like that. 20 quid. That's all you have to do. Just go in your local shop, yeah? Just ask them for money. They'll give you it. 20 quid. Just like that. Get in! So it's time to bring you up to date with how much money has been raised so far. Here we are. Bing! This is how much has been raised since I put the video up last night. Bing! Now, unless that changes from when I edit it again tonight, it's not very good. Five pounds, I think, is all I've uh, seen going. Five pounds, it might be ten pounds, I don't know. Y you'll know anyway by now. Not very good, so I think it's about time I reminded you why we're doing this. I'm going to show you a, a clip now, a minute, maybe two minutes long, of one of the children uh, we're doing this for. Rays of Sunshine is the charity. Um, we're making 
dreams come true for terminally ill and seriously ill children. When you smile at the ground, it ain't hard to tell. You don't know. You don't know you're beautiful. Caitlin. Hello. There we go. One more big group of Come on. <laughs> Hi, we're One Direction and we love working with Rose of Sunshine. I want to say thank you so much to them for having us involved um, over and over again. And they do incredible work and we've seen it over the last few years. So to make dreams like that come true, it all depends on donations from kind people like you. It costs on average about £1,000 to make a dream come true. We've already raised over 2000 and made two dreams come true. Let's make it three. Come on, let's get it up to three. Um, to donate, all the links are in the description below. Go to digginthecoast.com. Um, there's a donate button directly to the donate page underneath. Visit my blog, join me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, blah de blah de blah You know the score. But please, guys, come on, let's get this uh, donation coming again. We started so well and it just dried up yesterday. Somebody suggested I should take something from each seaside resort, but I didn't know what to take, and I still don't know what to take, so I think I'm just going to play it by ear and get something from every seaside resort. In Mabel thought, all right, we're starting with a piece of rock. I asked in the shop, he says it doesn't go off. It doesn't go off, it'll be all right in a year. So Mabel Thorpe, we've got some rock. And I'm gonna make a big box up of everything I've found, 365 items. I'm pretty sure I've collected something from the first seven days, which I can put in. And I'll collect some, 30 pence that cost me. It's gonna be a very expensive trip, is this? And then at the very end, I don't know, I might raffle it off or I'll do something or I might just give it away to one lucky viewer or unlucky viewer, it depends what I pick up on the way really, doesn't it? Are they all asleep? <laughs> Rested, like yeah. Asleep. Oh my God. <laughs> I've got their eyes closed. Yeah, they'll be sleeping <laughs> Well, I was wondering what the other day, what these uh, red and yellow flags were. You can't see them on this lens, it doesn't zoom in enough. But there's a yellow and red flag there, and there's one there. And there's a sign here and it says always swim between the red and yellow flags there's nobody swimming in between them flags but there's about five people over there and seven people over there at the other side of the flags now what would happen if you called the police would they get into trouble for breaking the law is it against the law to go outside of them flags why are the flags up do the coast guardy people know the sharks over there so don't go there why are the flags there and there? I don't understand.